In this tutorial, we're going to look at a way to make a branching, growing object in Maya. Now I'm doing it to make a nerve that is growing an axon and has a branching uh, extension here. This could be used for lots of things, for trees, vines, tentacles, anything. Um, it's not easy to do. But when is anything that easy in Maya? There are other programs that do this with other tools. I was inspired by the volume builder in Cinema 4D and what I've seen people doing with geometry nodes in Blender. It's 2023 right now, so who knows where we'll be with those things when this video is viewed. Um, but what the tools that we're using for this are a mix of very simple things and somewhat more complex things. So we are simply creating some curves here. So if I, it's kind of hard to show right now, but we're starting with a sphere. We're drawing a curve here and a curve here. You can see the curve there and the curve there. And we're extruding a circle along here to make um, this shape. But what the really tricky thing is, is to make this bifurcating surface. So if I just back it up, this kind of growth here, where it's a single piece of geometry. Now you can do something like this with Maya end particles, but we're doing this with Bifrost, the Bifrost graph, not to be confused with the Bifrost fluid simulator. And we'll go over this step by step, but just to give you an idea of where we're starting. So we're starting with the cell body shape up here, which is just a sphere. The axon shape, which is this long extension here, and the axon branch shape one, which is this piece of geometry here. And then in Bifrost, I'm converting each of these pieces of mesh to a volume. Then I'm merging these volumes. Then I'm turning those volumes back into a mesh and that's what allows this bifurcation to happen and also up here this sort of connection between the geometry and then going to an output and then the question is why do i have two of these here well because this is a bifrost graph object and if you want to turn this into actually a piece of maya mesh then you have to get it out of bifrost and then the final step in this is that I'll take this and export it as an alembic cache. And that way um, I can take it into another file and it will just be a single object with the animated growth without all the Bifrost stuff. And in that other um, file, I can reverse retime and do all sorts of things. So why don't we get started with Step one, which is just building the geometry. Okay, so let's get started with this. And we let's just get rid of this thing. And here's our Bifrost geometry that we've made. I'm just going to hide that to give you an idea of what we're starting with. So you can see I've got a couple of curves here, one here and here, and then a couple of NURB circles here. So. You can create the curves however you want. I just created these by going to Curve Tools, CV Curve Tool, and just drew them in the scene and you know, grab the control vertices, move them around to get the shapes that I wanted. Um, if you create something and it doesn't have enough geometry, so it doesn't have enough points for when you convert it, you can always go to Curves rebuild curves and set the number of spans something higher or lower depending on what you want and then these circles are just NURBS circles so going to create NURBS primitives circles and I'm just going to duplicate all this stuff just so I don't mess with the original so I'll just do shift D duplicate these and then I'll hide these ones. I'm keeping all these things in the scene just in case I get lost and can't remember what to do. Okay, so let's make the cell body first and it's really just a sphere. 
I'm just going to put it up here and we can change the size later on but I want it to be close to the geometry that I'm going to create here because we want it to merge when we convert it to a volume. So we'll start there. We can always change this later on. Okay. Now to make the extensions, we're going to use a NURBS extrusion. Now just to clarify, it's always confusing in Maya. Under Edit Mesh, you've got Extrude, and this is doing a polygon face extrude, and that's not what we're going to do here. Instead, we're going to go over to Surfaces and use this Extrude, okay? And this is more like the Sweep Mesh function in uh, Maya, so you're taking a profile curve and a path curve, and you're sweeping the profile curve along the path to make a new piece of geometry. And although this is a NURBS tool, we're going to actually export it as um, polygons. Okay. Um, and the reason we're using this extrude is that it's got one function that the other extrudes don't have, and that is that you can use a partial curve and animate it along the curve. So let me just go back. I'm selecting the circle, shift selecting the path, and we'll go to Surfaces, Extrude, and open this up. And you just have to make sure all four of these ones are active. If I just reset the settings, it's like this. Just make sure these ones are highlighted. Curve range, make sure you change that to partial polygons. And we'll change it to quads and um, standard fit. I can't remember, but we can change it after. So now if we just hit extrude, we get something like this and it's always inside out. And yeah, we don't want standard fit because you see this happening. It's adapting in the curvier parts, it's making more faces, but you get some ugly geometry like this five-sided polygon here. So if we just open up the attribute editor and change the NURBS tessellate, so NURBS tessellate is the function that converts a NURBS surface to a polygon surface and format fit um, general, maybe. Yeah, so with general, you can turn up these divisions per isoparm, or we can just do CVs. Yeah, we can just do CVs. So that's just putting um, a division wherever there's a CV on the original curve. So that's pretty good. So we can just leave it like that. And then in the extrude, we can reduce the scale down to a small number, like zero, so it still gets pointy at the end here. And let's say you've decided it's a little too wide at the beginning. You can just select that original circle and scale it down. So we still have history turned on here. Right, so you can still change the shape of the path as well. Okay, so why are we doing it this way? So if we just go in here and select this piece of geometry, um, we've got these subcurves here. So subcurve five and six, it'll be one and two for you. I've done a few already. So, um, but we've got a min value and a max value, and we can animate the max value to make the curve, the object grow along the curve. Okay, so this is a really old tool in Maya, uh, but it's one of the only ones that has this curve growing thing built in. I may be wrong about that, but who knows? I know this works. So then we can just do the exact same thing here with this branch, and we'll go to extrude. Everything should be correct now. Actually, no, I'll change this to uh, control points or CVs. Right, get something like this, reduce the scale down to zero. And yeah, we can just leave it like this. So, you know, if you only needed to see something like this from far away, and it didn't really matter that you couldn't see that these surfaces were blending together, you could probably get away with just doing something like this. If I take this circle and make it a bit smaller, and even if I take the path curve, 
you know, move its beginning so it kind of blends a little more seamlessly in here. You know, you could get away with just using something like this to animate the growth of these things, but they're not actually connected in any way. But I just wanted to show you that this is possible. And sometimes, you know, the distance from camera will determine how much effort you put into making something look super realistic. Anyway, so, but we're going to carry on and actually build this out um, as a volume converted to a mesh and then go from there. So we have to animate this thing first. Let's rename our thing. So we'll call this main axon. We'll call this second branch. I guess it's the first branch. Um, and we've named this soma, the cell body here. Okay, that's great. So now let's just animate this uh, first piece. So we'll start at the beginning. Now one thing. Bro, why are you talking? Look, look, at... look at you. Huh? I'm not part of that Okay, I don't know what happened just there. There was a bunch of music suddenly playing and frightened me. Um, okay, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, so I'm going to animate um, the main axon here. So, oh, yeah, so I was saying that um, if you set the max value here to zero, it can kind of mess things up. So it's better if you set it to a very, very small value at the beginning. So if I set this to zero point zero zero one let's say then it's actually still here so there is some geometry here and then we'll key that and then let's say over 96 frames we'll set this to one and we'll key this right so if we just play the animation now we get something growing and then we just have to time this next one. So, of course, if you've got lots of branches, it will take some time to orchestrate it all. But there are probably some efficient ways to do this. You could probably animate this once, export it as an alembic file or something, and then bring it back in and, you know, have it happen multiple times. We'll talk about exporting alembic files in a different context a little bit later. Um, but for now, I'll just show you the basic way to do this. So same thing here. I'll give this very small value. I'll set a key. And then let's have it finish a little bit later. OK, so here is an issue, right? So you'll have this floating piece here. We'll try to solve this later on when we convert this to volume, but who knows if we'll be successful. Uh, but we'll see. So it's pretty simple animation. And that one starts to grow. Okay. And I'm not worrying about them easing in or easing out. You could spend a lot of time doing that, and you should to get the animation right. Uh, but for now, just keep it like this for demonstration purposes. So there we go. We've got everything we've need, we need for the animation. And in the next step, we will take this into um, a Bifrost graph and, and work on it from there.